Hello, dear audience and participants of this webinar. I'm very happy to be here because it's a very special topic and it's about uh, transversely pre-stressed bridge diaphragms. And I, yeah, as I said, I would say it's very special and I am very happy to run this webinar with a colleague of mine. But who we are? My name is Clara Thiel and I'm a country manager in Idea Statica Penelux. I will just check. Yeah, hopefully you can see my screen. And uh, I'm here with a colleague of mine, with our very good product engineer, Chris Riemans. Hello, Chris. How are you today? Hi, Clara. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> okay, perfect. It looks that will be a nice session. Uh, you can see there on your uh, screen, probably on the right side, the uh, panel. All of our, all of uh, uh, you, like you are muted, but we will be very happy for your questions. You can write them uh, to the panel on the right side, as you can see now in the in the presentation and we will answer all of them. Some of the questions we will answer at the end of the webinar, but uh, uh, if we don't do it, then we will send you the, the answer via email. So please take the opportunity of the, of the webinar and take the opportunity of this very special topic, because as we found out, it can save you really a lot of time and, and energy. So, uh, Chris, what will be the agenda of uh, today's webinar? Yes, and I'm going to change to my screen now. Yeah, so I hope all of you can see my uh, screen. Yes. Uh, the agenda for today is going to uh, be as follows. I'm going to talk a bit about uh, some background theory and about load application. Um, modeling of geometry and reinforcements, uh, application of load cases and combinations according to Eurocode, um, a little bit about calculation settings, and finally, uh, interpretation of uh, results and report. So yeah, let's get into the uh, presentation. I'm gonna switch off the webcams. Yes, okay. Do. Uh, so first, a little bit about uh, theory and uh, load application of uh, these uh, diaphragm structures. Um, so there are a couple of commonly used methods for uh, designing and calculating um, uh, these diaphragm structures, uh, which are heavily reinforced concrete structures that are used uh, in, for example, box girder bridges. And uh, yeah, the design of these uh, bridge diaphragms uh, can often be a quite challenging task for uh, bridge engineers. So um, yeah, one method that is sometimes used uh, is uh, application of 2D uh, linear models. Uh, however, there are some limitations of this uh, method. Uh, everything just remains linear elastic. Um, and so the, the flow of the stresses might not be very realistic. Uh, there is no uh, cracking that's taken into account. And um, yeah, designing the reinforcements can also be a bit tricky uh, uh, this way. Uh, another commonly used uh, method is the uh, strut and tie method. Um, these can, however, be quite uh, time consuming to create. Uh, you need to create a strut and tie scheme for each load combination um, and each strut and tie have to be uh, checked separately as well as the, the nodes. Um, and yeah, they are also quite known for being sometimes a bit uh, conservative and not always suitable for uh, SLS situations. Uh, it's not always clear if, if the forces really flow according to your proposed strut and tie analogy uh, at SLS um, uh, situation. So yeah, this might give uh, inaccurate results for uh, crack with uh, checks. Uh, and some of these commonly used methods have been verified by, by real one-to-one um, uh, -one tests, uh, but the amount of tests that have been done are quite limited and also for only specific geometry. 
Um, so yeah, there are some limitations to these um, commonly used uh, methods. Uh, so as an alternative to these other methods, uh, Idea Statica proposes to use the so-called uh, compatible stress field method, or CSFM. Uh, it is based on nonlinear finite element method, and basically, uh, yeah, the strain is evaluated throughout the complete structure. Um, I don't have time now to go into detail about every aspect about this um, method, but the most relevant aspects of this uh, method are um, yeah, application of nonlinear stress strain curves for compression of uh, concrete, specifically the uh, parabola rectangular curve from Eurocode 2 is used. Um, the concrete cannot take up tension stress and yeah, has the ability to crack. It uh, assumes a fictitious rotating stress-free um, uh, crack approach uh, that open up without slip. Uh, reinforcements um, then can take over the tension uh, when a crack occurs uh, and the uh, uh, tension stiffening effect is uh, simulated. And moreover, the reinforcements can uh, yield in accordance with idealized bilinear stress strain diagrams. So also there the, uh, the nonlinear behavior is uh, taken into account. And the advantage is also that um, yeah, for any geometry, the method can be uh, uh, applied eh? and uh, can thereby produce more uh, accurate results and possibly saving uh, yeah, more material. And for more information about this uh, method, we refer you to the, uh, the knowledge-based articles on the website of uh, Idea Statica. Uh, a little bit about uh, load application on uh, these diaphragms. So yeah, most important loads to consider are um, basically the following. Uh, we have shear forces coming from the bridge into the, uh, the diaphragm, uh, torsion coming from the bridge, uh, that can be caused by asymmetric loading <clears throat> on the bridge deck, for example. Uh, and then we have these uh, downward forces coming from uh, pre-stressed uh, tendons uh, in longitudinal directions uh, that can be internal or uh, external. Uh, and moreover, uh, the bridge deck may also contain um, transverse uh, pre-stress. Um, and other loads are also possible, like for example, uh, a load vehicle on uh, one of the cantilevers, uh, a local load. But um, in this uh, webinar, we will focus a bit more on uh, the, the, the previous mentioned loads uh, coming from shear, torsion, and uh, pre-stress. Uh, and here you see a bit more um, images about uh, the, the, the shear flow in um, in the bridge. So uh, at the top right image, you can see the um, the trajectory uh, from the uh, the forces and uh, the, the flow of the forces from the bridge downwards to the uh, supports. Um, the torsion is uh, um, uh, visualized here also on the left side uh, that is applied on the, the, the bottom part and the top part as well as the um, uh, the inclined uh, parts. Um, yeah, it, it, one can imagine a sort of strut and tie analogy uh, to the whole bridge and bridge, and you can see also how the uh, shear forces end up then at uh, uh, the supports. Uh, so they're more concentrated at the, the bottom of the, uh, uh, the diaphragm. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, the torsion is uh, distributed over uh, the, all the different uh, parts. And I think now uh, we are ready for our first poll before I uh, start with our example. Yes, definitely, uh, Chris. As we can see, uh, like the the question or the task, how to how to correctly load and how to correctly create a model of a, a transversely pre-stressed bridge diaphragm. It's definitely not easy. So, and we have a lot of audience here. Uh, so, the poll is open and the question right now is easy and uh, maybe not super easy, but guys, how do you check diaphragms? How do you do it? You can maybe use uh, linear 2D FAIR software or method, strut and tie method. 2D or 3D nonlinear uh, tools like ANSYS, maybe MIDAS. 
fair and x uh, maybe you use also idea static detail or maybe you want to keep you your life diaprims at all <laughs> yeah and you do not deal with uh, diaphragms to make your life easier okay so i can see um not much, many people use idea static detail i can uh, i can see so Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, so one minute has left. So maybe let's uh, uh, let's give it a few more seconds. Yeah, I think and... most of them use strut and tie uh, method. 42%. Yes. Yes, 42% we can see strut and tie and 29% uh, yeah, or almost 30% do not deal with diaphragms, okay, diaphragms, and 29% like linear. Hmm, yeah. Interesting, and interesting. 20%. Okay, I will try to be honest to share the share the results uh, ah okay so the poll is closed right now and i think now you are not able to to see the results so please trust us 41 uh one percent use uh, strut and tie method so it's yeah it's kind of like to be sure, 28% linear method, 20% 2D or 3D nonlinear uh, analysis, and 30% of you. Idea statica. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, ah, here I can share it. Sorry, sorry, guys. So now you can see it. Uh, the results. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it uh, kind of, uh, uh, is it kind of, um, uh surprise for you uh chris these results or you would expect that people deal with uh diaphragm diaphragms yeah like I, I think uh this is a, a little bit what i would expect and uh yeah maybe hopefully after this webinar <laughs> people would be more willing to consider using idea statica so let's see mm -hmm. okay, okay okay perfect let's uh, continue we'll then yeah we'll see in the in the next part of the next part yeah. of the webinar we will see also the software and yes and we will be again very happy for your questions so hopefully maybe now you, you will see a little bit of software so exactly. hopefully uh sorry sorry it's hidden sorry so maybe some questions will appear so yeah. okay chris Let's okay uh, thanks clara I will continue now with the demonstration, uh, the example. So uh, we're gonna open up the uh, concrete detail application. And as you will see, um, the program already will um, open up uh, a model here. If we create a new one, um, we have some initial values to fill in. Uh, concrete quality, C4555, we'll leave it like this. Reinforcement, B500B, and a concrete cover of 45 millimeter. Uh, Pre-stressing steel will be uh, standard Y1860 S7. Uh, and we're gonna choose for uh, diaphragms uh, template, and then more specifically, the, the single box girder uh, diaphragm. And uh, as you will see, the uh, the program already uh, applies some default uh, dimensions for the geometry of the diaphragm and for the uh, reinforcements. And uh, yeah, just to make it a bit more clear, I'm going to um, remove all of these uh, reinforcements uh, that the program creates by default. Um, and we'll add those, uh, we'll add new reinforcements later. Uh, and so now we'll focus a bit more on uh, the geometry. Um, we're going to apply, uh, we're going to change the dimensions of the geometry and of the uh, the opening. So I already have some values ready to give as input, which I'm going to fill in uh, fill in now. 
So that's going to be Yes, so the um, the basic the, or the most relevant dimensions, um, yeah, are basically the the top width of 14 meters, uh, the height of three meters, the cantilever parts are about uh, three meters, and uh, the thickness out of plane is uh, two meters. We can also see that uh, there are inclined parts that have been uh, applied on the sides of the diaphragm, uh, and now we're going to change the dimensions and uh, position of the opening as follows. So we're going to choose a rectangular a shape width of 1.4 meters, height of 1.8 meters, going to uh, set the opening in the middle, the diagram and move it up a little bit like, oh, like this. Um, yeah, and so basically this is the uh, the main geometry of uh, the model. There's also a possibility to view it in uh, uh, 3D. You can uh, make it transparent or solid, uh, and this way you can also check if the thickness you've applied makes uh, sense. And uh, yeah, but for now, I'm gonna switch back to the uh, 2D view. Uh, moving on to the uh, supports then. Uh, the first support is restrained in X and Z uh, direction. We'll apply a width of 0.9 meters and the position uh, is set to 0.7 meters. Uh, we will also um, make use of this um, option of partially loaded area. And uh, it means that uh, the area of the support is regarded as a partially loaded area as described in Eurocode 2 article uh, 6.7. I will give a little bit more explanation about that in uh, the following slide. So um, yeah, here you can basically see um, the formula from uh, Eurocode uh, mentioned and um, basically what it means is that the resistance can be increased according to the ratio of the um, design loaded area and the, uh, uh, the real loaded area. And as can be seen from the formula, the, the increase can be up to a factor of uh, three uh, times the design strength of the concrete. Um, however, instead of literally increasing the strength of the material uh, in this area, uh, what the program actually does is simply to decrease uh, automatically the occurring stresses in that area by the same ratio. And uh, furthermore, it can be seen that the, uh, the, the shape of the cone uh, of the stress cone also depends on the uh, yeah the distance uh, from the edge or uh, from the uh, the opening. Um, so moving back then to uh, the Idea Statica interface, um, above the supports uh, we also need to apply reinforcements, um, and uh, these are specifically there to take up uh, the yeah, tension stresses that act perpendicular to the uh, compressive stresses. And these specific reinforcements um, can already be defined uh, here in this menu. So we're going to uh, put this here. It's, uh, four layers and this distance is going to be set to 0.2 meters. And yeah, we can visualize now. We're going to apply the same properties for support two. Uh, and the only difference um, here is going to be uh, that the restraint is only in uh, Z, uh, Z direction and the other dimensions um, are going to be similar to support one. Yeah. All right, so uh, now we've basically um, uh, created the, the, the load or the geometry and uh, the openings and uh, set the properties for the supports. Now we're going to move on with the application of the loads. And um, by default, Idea Statica already created several standard load cases. Um, and within each load case, 
uh, already several load effects were specified. Um, we're going to delete all of these uh, so that later we can apply new ones from scratch. Uh, and also um, the first load case was set to an ordinary permanent uh, load uh, type case, but we're going to change this to a pre-stressing type. Uh, and yeah, it's meant for um, the, the transverse pre-stress that we're going to apply later. Um, yeah, so for LC1 pre-stressing, uh, we can't define uh, any pre-stressing load effects here in uh, this, this menu because it will be automatically generated when we define the tendons in transverse direction. So uh, this is something we'll uh, do later when we come to the modeling of the reinforcements. Um, going then to LC2, uh, we'll consider the effects of the um, uh, global shear forces coming from the permanent loads uh, and the effects of the longitudinal pre-stress tendons uh, that are applied. Um, and we'll apply these as line loads on the inclined parts. Uh, and the values that we're going to use are assumed to be known from um, global analysis model. And in this case, we'll uh, assume a value of 1900 kilonewton per meter. Um, we're going to define the position based on points. So there we go. We have to specify a sort of reference point. This is going to be 2.6 meters. And this is going to be 0.65 and 0.23. And we'll do the same on the other side. We're just going to copy. Uh, this load effect, and we're just going to change the um, the reference point, and then the value we're going to apply minus sign. And that's basically it. Then we're going to move on to the variable load, which will consist of uh, more uh, load effects. Uh, and these effects will represent the um, effects um, from global shear forces and torsion from the variable loads on the bridge and are also applied in a bit simplified way um, using, again, these line, line loads. Uh, so first, the uh, vertical components in the inclined parts. Again, the values are assumed to be known from a global analysis model. Uh, so in this case, we'll use... Uh, 2300 kilonewton per meter. We'll specify the position. Oh, wait, I had to create a trace like this. Uh, yeah, so let me just check if these values are correct. Then we're going to copy this also for. Okay, for some reason it's not showing the <laughs> load effects. What is going on here? Uh, let's see if it will work. If we change this to here. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, so we have to have to be careful with uh, getting the reference points correct. Um, and then here it's going to be on the other side. So we're going to apply here a minus sign like so. And on the right side, we'll have a different value uh, because of the version. Um, one side will be loaded more than uh, the other side. So on the right side, we assume a value of 670. Uh, then we'll move on to horizontal components and we'll basically copy the previous load cases and we're just going to change uh, the values and the direction of the forces. So this will be value of 510 in X direction and also here on this side 510 in 
uh, x uh, direction. All right. And uh, also, uh, we assume and, and simplify the load a bit uh, and say it, it's concentrated more on the um, bottom half of the structure, uh, like was what was explained in the uh, the presentation. So we put it on half the half bottom uh, part. Um, finally, we will uh, add the horizontal components caused by torsion in the bottom and the top part of the structure. And again, we assume and uh, simplify uh, this load again as a line load uh, on the left top half of the structure and on the bottom right part of the structure. And in this case, it will be a value of minus 1000. It's going to be in x direction. Um, the loads are going to be positioned based on points again. The reference points are going to be set like this. Value at minus seven, set coordinate at 2.6, and then the other point, 3.2, and 2.6. All right, then we'll have the load on the bottom part, which will be in the uh, positive direction, and now change the uh, coordinates again. So this will become plus seven. Now we're at the bottom part, so we're gonna change the set coordinates as well. And X coordinate and Z coordinate. All right, so basically these represent all the load effects in um, our load case tree, uh, the variable loads. Um, now the loads have been specified, we can specify the combinations now. So if we consider these combinations, we can open up a table. Uh, we will consider one ULS load case or load combination and two uh, SLS load combinations. We're going to change the load factor. So a load factor of one for the pre stress load case and 1.35 for the other load cases for ULS and then uh, for SLS quasi-permanent we'll use here a factor of 0.3 for uh, the variable loads. And basically that's uh, that's it. That's how we uh, apply the loads and uh, the load combinations. Uh, now we'll move on to uh, the reinforcements and uh, yeah ordinarily they can be defined and edited uh, here in the uh, the reinforcement tab, you can select any type of uh, bar where you can change the uh, the diameter and uh, the position of uh, uh, of the bars and uh, also the type of uh, anchorage. But because of time lim uh, limitations, we will not go through creating every um, reinforcement bars. Uh, they are simply going to be uh, imported through a pre-made uh, reinforcement uh, template file. And as you will uh, see, uh, there will be uh, different reinforcement groups uh, are being imported here. Um, so for example here, GB9 consists of the uh, vertical bars or GB8 uh, has to do with horizontal um, bars. The only thing that still has to be defined now is actually the uh, tendon in transverse direction uh, at the top of the structure. So we're still going to add that one manually. So we'll choose pre-stressing tendon here. And then for the properties, uh, we'll choose post-tensioned. And for the number of strands, we'll uh, set it to 15, which can also be uh, taken as corresponding to um, uh, three uh, attendance consisting each of five strands uh, is going to give uh, equivalent effect. Um, it belongs to uh, LC1, of course, and then the short-term losses are calculated uh, automatically. Uh, for the definition of the uh, shape, we're going to base it on a polyline. And then for uh, this polyline, I already have some Excel ready here with some coordinates. I'm just going to 
copy this here. And as you can see, the tendon is uh, shaped uh, like this. You can see it in the, uh, the image. Let's press OK. And then, um, yeah, we only have to specify uh, here the, the width of the anchors. We'll set it to 0.3 meters. And then um, we're going to um, specify some properties for the pre-stress. So um, the anchorage stress or initial anchorage stress will be set to 100, 1,150 MPA. Anchorage set the beginning is going to be 5 mm. Friction coefficient is also going to be left on its default value, 0.2 and the unintended angular change or sometimes called wobble factor is set to 0 0.001. So basically um, this is how we uh, model all the reinforcements. It's also possible to view it in uh, 3D in the transparent mode. Uh, you can see all the reinforcement bars uh, being applied there. It's a good uh, way to check the, the model. All right, and now uh, the model is almost ready to be um, calculated. Uh, one last thing we will check are um, some calculation settings. Uh, so by default, um, many of the values can be just left as they are. Uh, we noticed, however, that uh, if you want to calculate this model on a laptop, uh, it can be a bit slow with the default uh, mesh size. So we set it to 2.5. Uh, the mesh will be a little bit more coarse, but still fine enough to uh, yield reliable results. Um, so this is the, the multiplier, it's called, uh, of the default mesh. And furthermore, uh, there are some uh, options here. So um, uh, for example, neglect stress, check for concrete in partially loaded areas. Well, we specify that we don't want the program to neglect it. So we're gonna switch this off, but we are going to neglect the so-called decompression uh, check. And that has to do with uh, uh, whether or not the pre-stressed uh, tendon remains uh, under compression. And um, yeah, and also can depend on uh, your national annex, what are exactly the rules. Uh, for that, but for now we assume that uh, the tendon can is allowed to be under uh, tension, especially if it's, for example, in a, a plastic uh, duct. Um, this uh, decompression check can be uh, neglected. All right, and uh, basically then we have all the um, calculation settings uh, done, and we would be ready for uh, calculating it uh, when. If I calculate it right now, it would take approximately 10 minutes. So uh, in order to save time, I'm gonna continue with a, um, a model that was already calculated beforehand. And then we can already immediately switch to the, uh, the results, right? So I just opened the same model, which has already been calculated um, before. And uh, now we're gonna go through some of the uh, results um, so first of all, we can have a look at, for example, reaction forces. Uh, you can clearly see also the asymmetry there caused by the, uh, the torsion. Um, if we then go uh, through the tabs from all the results, we see that we uh, start here with a, a summary, basically, of all the checks that have been performed. Uh, so for ULS, um, we have the strength of the concrete, strength of reinforcement, uh, strength of tendon and anchorage uh, length. And basically what you show here are all the um, uh, extreme values of the, the utilization. And, um, and for SLS, we have um, other type of checks. So uh, we have stress limitation checks for SLS, crack width checks, and yeah, the decompression check has been uh, switched off for now. So there's no uh, result for this specific uh, check. Um, yeah, going into a little bit more detail then, uh, on the specific results. So for example, here, let's start with concrete. We can uh, show the, um, the concrete stresses in the structure. Uh, you see there's some concentrations of stress here in the corners of the opening. Uh, here also at the bottom at the left support. 
need to keep in mind though that um, because of the option of uh, partially loaded area, the stresses here in this area are automatically uh, reduced. Um, so that, that effect is taken into account in the occurring stresses uh, here. Uh, furthermore, we can show the uh, uh, compressive strains. Uh, so um, you see, again, the similar areas are have the highest uh, uh, strains. Uh, we can also show plastic strains. Um, uh, so large part is not uh, uh, does not have plastic behavior, but some areas, local areas, do. And we can also uh, see the utilization. So the occurring stress. Um, divided with the uh, limits uh, limitation, uh, and then the, yeah, all the extreme values are listed here in the table. Uh, we can also have a look at the stresses and strains in the uh, reinforcements. Uh, so, for example, here at the top, you see uh, the highest value occurring. It's uh, uh, already yielding, but still below the uh, ultimate tensile strength. Uh, moreover, we can see also here the strains in the uh, in the reinforcements, and for each reinforcement group, uh, the program lists the most extreme um, uh, unity check, basically. And so you can go through every reinforcement bar if you uh, if you wish. Uh, finally, we have also the uh, stresses and strains in the tendon at the top here. Um, Giving, giving you also um, the utilization based on uh, stress and uh, strain. Uh, so here we see the occurring stresses and here the occurring uh, strains. Um, there is a result for the anchorage yeah, and it uh, checks the, um, the bond stress versus the uh, versus FBD and yeah, the maximum allowable bond stress. Um, yeah, it's there for completeness sake. It's it's a less interesting result, I think, for now. So let's move on to uh, stress limitation checks for SLS. Uh, we have checks for concrete reinforcement and tendons again. Um, uh, here you can see the um, principal stresses in the uh, concrete. And uh, yeah, you can also see that they fulfill or satisfy the uh, uh, the check, so they're still under the limit value. Also, the um, uh, limit, stress limitation check for reinforcement. There, uh, you can see it uses as a stress limit check or stress limit 400 MPa, and for each group again, you can see the occurring uh, stresses, and they are well below the uh, the limit. So. Finally, the tendon again, uh, we have the uh, maximum occurring stress and stress limitation here, uh, providing a utilization of, in this case, 97.5%. Uh, uh, then we come to a very interesting feature of the program, and that is uh, the crack width uh, check. Uh, the program can uh, simulate the cracking and produce a uh, crack width. Uh, plus check. Uh, yeah, you can see here based on these uh, images that uh, you can expect cracks here, especially at the top of the uh, structure. Uh, you see the maximum value here. Uh, furthermore, you can, yeah, based on this, expect some cracking here uh, parallel to the compression um, strut going to the support uh, um, and also on, on the other side. Moreover, you can expect some cracks here uh, in the corners of the uh, opening. So uh, I would say the results are quite uh, logical. And basically, it produces a <coughs> check for each um, uh, reinforcement group. Uh, it uses the formula from um, uh, the, the Euro code, um, but it, uh, it uses the, yeah, that method for uh, each case. So uh, you have to be a bit careful if your national annex has some uh, proposes some different method or parameters. Uh, and here at the top, you can also play around with the uh, crack width limit. If you want to uh, have a more stricter limit, you can adjust it uh, here. Um, furthermore, oh, 
I think I press a button which requires some time for the program to load. <laughs> Yeah, here you see how the checks change if you uh, change the uh, the limit value. Um, yeah, I'm gonna move on to these uh, additional uh, results here, auxiliary uh, results, and they basically show um, the complete stress, uh, principal stresses in uh, the concrete. So uh, sigma one for the um, uh, tensile stresses and sigma two for the uh, principal compressive stresses, right? And because concrete cannot take up any tension here, you, yeah, you see only a very small value here. Uh, and then here the compressive stresses uh, again. It's also interesting to show are the trajectories or the, the direction of the stresses. Uh, and you see here, for example, at the top, how uh, the uh, stresses flow around this uh, opening and um, yeah, correspond to uh, yeah a lot of cracking and stress concentrations in this uh, area here. And um, yeah, so basically those were uh, all the uh, results. Um, and uh, yeah, in this table here on the left side, you can see immediately that all the checks fulfill uh, their requirements. So this was uh, sort of in a nutshell, uh, all the results coming from um, the calculation. Then finally, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some other um, uh, options we have here. For example, Bill of Materials uh, will give you a table of all the uh, applied uh, elements and then reinforcements. Uh, so you see also the images of those with the dimensions and the um, diameter, etc. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you get a nice overview table of uh, the total length of certain bars with specific diameters and the weight and the total weight, et cetera, et cetera. So this gives a very nice overview, which can be handy uh, to, for example, uh, send to a contractor who's going to build your structure. Um, another thing we're gonna show you is the report function. And in the report function, uh, yeah, it's gonna create a nice uh, report of your whole uh, calculation. And there are some options here on the left side to add or remove certain things if you want to make it more compact or more elaborate. Uh, so if we go through the report as it is uh, specified now, you get an overview of the applied materials with all the properties. Um, the geometry of your model with boundary conditions, uh, your, your load cases, or in this case, the total load combinations that are uh, applied. Uh, you see an overview of the applied uh, reinforcements. And then uh, here the results basically with all the relevant uh, contour plots and checks that have been uh, performed. I uh, hear, for example, reinforcements results for all the reinforcement groups, uh, stresses in the concrete and strains, Have all these nice images, uh, checks for the anchorage of your reinforcements. Uh, these are um, SLS results. Uh, so we have results for ULS and for SLS. Again, crack widths are here. Um, and here also it includes the bill of material similar to what we saw before with all the uh, applied reinforcement bars. And finally, here also the overview table and um, table with explanation of all the uh, parameters that have been uh, been used. So this is basically an overview of the report. There's some options here again um, to uh, add or remove some of the parts if you uh, like them or don't like to include them. Uh, so yeah, this gives a very nice complete um, overview of your whole calculation, basically. All right, so basically that was it for the uh, demonstration part. Um, I think I Thanks. only still, yeah, Mir Clara. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. Um, yeah, I would say it looks like very, very useful tool for this special, special uh, tasks. 
and maybe uh, let's ask our audience uh, how long does it take to you to model and load a transversely pre-stressed bridge uh, across a diaphragm? Because I like we could see that uh, even if we skip the even if we skip the uh, reinforcement part and also calculation part, which would take uh, like of course about I don't know 20 minutes still we can see that uh like it was it was quite fast to to model and uh, load and even check the the structure the diaphragm. Yeah. yeah the structure so let's give it few more seconds because i'm really curious about our yes our audience and i would say that the results looks very interesting okay okay so hmm okay let's give it a yeah. few more seconds five four three two one okay i'm closing the poll and i'm sharing the results and yeah uh, uh, I would say that uh, yeah, as you can see, 11 uh, percent of uh, our audience, 11 percent of you, it takes only one hour and less to count the the diaphragm, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And maybe I guess a little bit that you use idea statica detail, but it can be another interesting question for you what method you use. Uh, there is also like uh, for 38 percent of people it's uh, one to three hours and more than half of you it's three and more hours. Of course it's a question also of like it's also a question of the structure but yeah uh, very interesting results. Uh, Again, Chris, question for you: Is it a surprise for you, or would you expect? No, not really. Like I, I think, uh, especially with the um, sort of more commonly used methods, uh, it can be very uh, time-consuming. Um, so I think uh, there's a lot of opportunity there to do it uh, faster. Um, of course, it's also a bit dependent on how many different load cases you want to consider, how many different load combinations. Uh, uh, so the in my model, I already had some loads <laughs> just ready, and we, we were just considering very few uh, load combinations. Uh, yeah, nevertheless, and I maybe want to uh, elaborate on that using this slide that I still have. Um, I think with I using this... Sorry, um, I, will, I will make you again presenter, so oh, I think yeah. now, and I will hide the, the poll. So yeah. now we should see your screen. Yeah, so uh, I, I think using this uh, specific method, uh, the CSF uh, method that's in, implemented in the Statica, we can uh, really speed up uh, the, um, the calculation uh, process, uh, especially compared to these uh, other methods that we've uh, seen. And that can have a lot of benefit for the material use. Uh, so um using less material because we can uh, model these materials and their behaviors more accurately and uh, then also the, the code checks is already implemented in um, uh, the module itself and the application uh, it gives a very nice overview of all the checks and puts it into a nice uh, report so it's ready to hand over to any mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah organization that needs to check your calculations for example Okay, Chris, we can't see your screen. Can you please check if you are sharing the slide so oh, so we yeah, know? Oh, yeah, I thought I was sharing it. So sorry. Yeah, no, 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 it's fine. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. it's this yeah, one. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I hope it's uh, hope it's clear. I don't know if you still want to sh show anything about the the poll results or. I think it's uh, it's okay for now. Also, that we are okay with the time. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will take the presenter back to me and uh, 
sure. let's go thank you for the summary which we have seen and so we can hear there is a lot of benefits and now there is the question and answer part and uh, we got a lot of questions from you thank you very much as i mentioned we will answer all of them but we can't answer them right now so uh i will um uh, choose uh... i will choose just uh, one of them and maybe uh because there are some uh like uh how to say like a csf method it's quite new so maybe chris can you tell us more about this method and uh, maybe yeah. can we really trust this method because strat and tie is yeah. well, well known of course so it's a good uh, question it is indeed a, a bit newer uh, method but uh, let me just quickly uh, I d I'm not sharing my screen anymore, of course. Ah, huh? uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> sorry. So I will. So now you are a presenter. Yeah, and now you can yeah. share the screen. Okay, sorry. I don't know if am I sharing the right screen here. Um, yeah. So basically, the um, um, this one I need. Yeah. Um, the CSFM method, it, it is, uh, uh, more information can be found on the uh, Idea Statica uh, website. And what's interesting to know is that um, it is validated by a team led by Professor Walter Kaufmann at uh, ETH uh, uh, Zurich. And uh, yeah, it was published, the verification and validation examples were published in the book, uh, Compatible Stress Field Design of Structural Concrete. So the validation uh, is there, and um, yeah, for more details, I would just refer people to uh, the uh, the articles that are available on the website and to the the book that has been uh, published about it. Okay, amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would say yes. It can be. It can be. You can contact us because of the book, or you can find a lot of uh, useful information on our website also. Thank you very much, Chris. Yeah. And I will take the presenter back to me and finish uh, the webinar in really while. Uh, there will be next webinar uh, on 12th of October, and you can get information about what's new in Idea Statica 22.1 because there will be new version of Idea Statica with a lot of mm -hmm. amazing features. So save the day and we will you will got uh, probably uh, invitation or you can see it on our website on, or on our another channels like linkedin or facebook so save your time uh, there will be also something about details so uh, stay tuned i would say mm -hmm. after the webinar you will uh, you will get sh short survey uh, you can find recording it was by the way also one of the questions you can find recording in support center and on our youtube channel uh, you can get trial version uh, on our website here in the right up corner uh, you can also get edu license it was also one of the question you can also get uh, edu license and it's for one year so please click uh, go to our website and you can find our information also about edu licenses and uh, we mentioned many times support center with uh, uh, tens or maybe more very useful articles and if you still have some questions don't hesitate and contact us we will be happy to to answer the questions and i would say that this is it from from us and thank you very much for uh, for the watching the webinar we will be happy to hear your feedback and yeah i would say we were very happy to spend hour with you Yes. and uh, from our Benelux branch and I would say that for Chris it was the first webinar so thank <laughs> you very much Chris for the preparation and for the for the nice webinar yeah thanks uh, Clara okay. and also maybe to mention the the questions we'll try to um, 
send uh, answers to these questions um, uh, later when we have time for them. So thanks everyone for sending in your questions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much, guys. Have a nice uh, have a nice day. And uh, if you are in the same time zone, then I would I would say also enjoy your meal, enjoy your lunch. Yes. Okay. Right. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.